uh, well, definitely it's an honor for me to be with Jamaica today, uh, as you can see. And so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, glad to be here again for another successful Women in Tech Global Conference. Uh, and I look forward to it every year. So as the topic states, uh, identity and digital transformation. Uh, as you all know that digital transformation is a loaded word. Different people have different understanding, interpretation for this. And when I look at digital transformation, I view it as a transformation that allows how a business can interact with its customers at a fundamental level. And it can be by a process, technology, product offerings, and whatnot. As you all know, the world has gone digital more so in last three years at a rapid pace. And with that, the threat landscape and cybersecurity risks have becoming, are becoming very challenging. And these key drivers will continue to be the focus area, increasing in revenue and profitability, right balance around operational costs and managing these risks is going to be really important. Identity is the air and pretty much the backbone of our digital economy. And the traditional identity methods are not sufficient. So it's very critical that we focus on these. So with that, I'm going to ask Jamaica a question here. And we'll play the role of asking each other, making it more conversational for, you know, to provide more information. So Jamaica, we play different roles at Okta where we get to collaborate and complement each other to attain digital transformation, CISO and engineering. Would you like to share like, you know, how our jobs help us and how does identity play a central role in any digital transformation? Sure, Monica. So I think, you know, you, you laid it out perfectly. Identity is the new perimeter. Um, the workforce has moved out of the traditional office in many cases and into their homes and into you know, uh, temporary spaces. And so our job is to protect them wherever they are. That's on the workforce side or the customer side. Well, what role do you and I play? Uh, we're co-conspirators. I think <laughs> it is such a joy um, to to have you and Pavna um, as, as my co-counterparts in the work that we do. Um, the, the security team is, you know, often the department of no. And what we've done um, at, at, in the customer identity cloud at Okta is made it the department of maybe, because <laughs> we still say no sometimes. But ultimately we've created created um, an architecture and a design that helps us both to accelerate digital transformation, accelerate innovation in our products, while also making sure that it's secure. And so um, it's such a pleasure to work with um, such brilliant people, but those brilliant people happen to be women. Um, and that's a first in my career. So outside of us just doing this incredible work um, around identity, we also are doing a whole lot of work uplifting women and being beacons of hope for the women in this industry. Well, thank you, Jamaica. I truly echo that. And it has been a joy, you know, just the whole support at Okta and outside Okta as well. So definitely we need more women in this field. Um, from my now, I have a question for you. Yes. I have a question for you. So let's talk a little bit about identity and unification um, and the ability to accurately identify users across multiple channels. So <laughs> you talk about those multiple channels. I'm talking about web, mobile, social media. Tell me a little bit about your thoughts on that. Sure, so identity unification is uh, very critical for the success of any modern organization. And I, I put them in three S's, serviceable, scalable, and secure. And when we talk about serviceability, we talk about user experience, where the ability to accurately identify users across multiple channels, like web, mobile, social media, and you want to create that seamless experience across all applications and devices, single sign-on, reducing login friction, giving that personalized context-based experience at every part of the journey is really important. The other part which I want to touch here is simplified user management. Because once we have the identity unification, user management becomes very simple, more efficient. And instead of having to identify multiple identity sources and systems, there is a single source of truth for user identity data, which can help reduce errors and also streamline the processes the saving time. When we talk about scalable, which is the second part, I mean, as you know, like, you know, customers want more and more, and the scale is happening at a rapid pace. They, as companies are growing, they need to manage an increasing number of user accounts, authentication mechanisms, and access controls. 
which can quickly become very complex and time consuming. And so what happens is managing these multiple user identities across multiple applications and devices, if you don't have a centralized access control and simplified user provisioning and deprovisioning, it becomes really cumbersome. So that's very important in the digital context as well as digital transformation is happening. And it helps our customers, partners, and employees. I want to emphasize on that, that mm -hmm. it's not just about employees. There are like customers and partner ecosystem, which is huge around it. And the last one is, of course, the most important, the secure one. Improving security, because when you have identity unification, it can help improve the security to provide a single point of control for access of resources and for data to reduce uh, risk of the data breaches as well. It can help compliance, the GDPR, the CCPA, and many other laws, as you know, like you deal with this every day. And it helps to have the centralized platform for managing user data. So I see we have some questions that have come in. So I'm going to go ahead and read one and actually answer it, because I think this is an interesting, one, interesting mm -hmm. one, and it actually goes along with our discussion. So the question is, how can businesses balance the need for security with the desire for convenience and digital identity solutions? For, for me as a CISO, um, the balance between friction and security are critically important. And it's one of the things I think that you and I, Monica, are working on um, a lot. Um, I would say one of the one of the ways that you do this is by leveraging some of the newer technologies to build upon. So when you're thinking about building new platforms, they should be web off in FIDO2 enabled so that you can take advantage of some of the consumer centric ways in which you authenticate like biometrics. Um, these are new web devices and our new cell phones are coming with with these capabilities already embedded into them. And so when you build the product that can connect with those um, those um, PIN, passwords, one-time PINs um, with biometrics, it balances that need for, fr it balances the friction with security. And so when, for us, we're thinking about that, and that's how our technology is built. It's built to include social logins. It's built in to include biometrics. And so really, that's where the balance is. The balance is in how we build the product and how the consumer uses it. Um, and so we have to make sure that the consumer is not a abandoning the login process and they're not getting MFA fatigue through the process. And so that's what we're doing in our product to balance it. But I think that's what's happening across industry as well. Yeah. And to piggyback on that, I mean, uh, Jamaica, you touched about the passwordless authentication, which is really, really important because there is a whole, I mean, if you follow social media, there's a whole mission about being passwordless, right? We mm -hmm. want to make sure we are using proper security tokens, MFA, biometrics, and pass keys, which is the new one, which is reducing the, the whole password related uh, breaches. And the second one is zero trust security, because zero trust security is a security model which requires all the users, devices, and applications to be authenticated and authorized before granting any data or resources. So this model assumes that nobody needs to be trusted, right? when you enter in. And so it's really, really important, which provides an additional layer. And as you have seen, like, you know, many times this not having zero trust has evolved into data breaches. And the last one is, of course, users' privacy and compliance. So users need the peace of mind when it comes to mind and trust is the key mm -hmm. because we need to make sure that we are having right checks and balances when it comes to data sharing. Because data processing, data deletion, data storage, there are so many aspects in this when it comes to the data governance piece. Uh, so that's really important. And then I see there's another question on how organizations can educate their customers and employees on the importance of digital identity and building trust. And I, and I'll, I say this all the time, this is about people. And so what we're doing is people. We're not technology for the sake of technology. And so one of the ways that we educate at Okta is reminding our customers and our employees that they're the first line of defense. And so when we abandon processes or when, when we decide, hey, this is too hard, ultimately you become the weakest link. And so for us, it's about educating um, our employees that they are the first line of defense. And so we use all of the ways. We have hackathons that integrate our employees into our security process and into our engineering process. We use a ton of different um, vendors that help us to um, help our teams code securely. Um, we use Escape the Room. So it's a ton of a ton of different ways that we are looking at how we do education. Some of them are fun. Some of them are not so fun. But ultimately, it's about making sure that your customers and your employees understand they are your first line of defense. That's good. Um, I think uh, Ivo is saying like there's some echo. 
Yeah, it's coming from me. Hopefully I can fix it. Okay, go ahead, Monica. I'll let you go to the next question. Sure, no, no problem. Um, so um, the other point of view uh, I want to ask here, you know, I want to add to this, uh, uh, the organization's education is one is, of course, we want to make sure we have a comprehensive identity management strategy, uh, which helps us align across the organization and everybody, you have clear roles and responsibilities for all the stakeholders. You also want to make sure that you have a risk-based approach, which means that identity and access management system should be designed with a risk-based approach where risk assessments are done on a regular basis. As an engineering leader, I always look for making sure that we are building software with secure by design principles. So security is not an afterthought. Uh, as a developer, you are bringing it forefront. And then you want to make sure that uh, MFA is there, right? Multi-factor authentication is an additional layer of security by for every single user, whether it is through biometric, through password, or anything, any other to pro protect our digital assets. And we talked about uh, zero trust, which is least privileged principle, right? Make sure you have that, making sure we provide also minimum level of access and then build on top of it as we see the need, because that's, that's really important. And then education about the compliance piece, the privacy piece is going to be really, really important. So um, Jamaica, one question for you is, um, how do organizations measure ROI for their investments in identity management? So I think there are a couple of ways in which you can measure the return on investment for identity management. One of the best ways that I know, specifically in the workforce space, is around interaction with your customer service and support help desk. One of the one of the best things that we do in both workforce and customer identity is reduce the amount of time that you need to have password resets. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about this, is a big number. Um, I know that a lot of organizations probably don't think it's a big number, but if you go in and take a look at your service management systems, you'll find that the majority of the calls that likely come in are around password management. These new digital identity solutions allow for automatic reset of password management and self-service um, in both cases. Um, and not just in the case of when a user needs to actually access a, an account, but also when there is an, a threat actor or an attack that has happened, like a credential stuffing attack, there's the ability to automatically use machine learning to go in and reset those passwords for those consumers' accounts who may have been compromised. And so when you think about return on investment. We're not just thinking about this immediate return. We're thinking about the return long term um, in interactions with people um, in our ability to automatically use um, our capabilities to reset passwords, to cut down on time with call centers and um, cut down on resources where we can automate. And so I, those are some of the things we think about with return on investment. But also, when you think about the return on investment, we have a lot of ransomware attacks that are happening and they're incredibly effective. Mm -hmm. The number one most effective tool against ransomware is multi-factor authentication. And so when you think about return on investment for CISOs, it's really difficult because we are essentially measured by something never happening. And so when I think about return on investment, for me, I'm thinking about investing in technologies that will help enable other parts of the organization, whether that's engineering or IT or product development. I'm also thinking about how our investment in these digital um, technologies can help cut down um, cost, uh, cost of um, cost of doing business, and so ultimately that that adds to our return on investment as well. Well, thank you. Um, I'll take the last question here. Uh, how can organizations ensure that their digital identity solutions are accessible and inclusive for all users? Great question, Angelina. Great uh, question. Yeah. I can tell you uh, as a leader for developer experience, one thing is really, really important for me is whatever experience we build uh, has to be personalized, has to be frictionless and context based because we want to create that stickiness for our users. As I stated earlier here that identity is the first touch point. Anytime you are logging into any applications, whether it is like digital or you know your experiences, it's hard. And identity is very hard because behind the scene, it seems, I mean, in front, it seems like a login box, but I'll tell you, it is fairly complex behind the scene. And we want to make sure that these experiences are built with speed and scale both. So it's not like, you know, we want to be ready for the future, which means that right from onboarding to registration to insights, also showing customers like what is happening internally, how they're using it, the solution, which includes personalization, 
So being able to log in and then being able to extend the login experience, right? So you we provide out of the box certain solution, but if the users want to customize it and integrate it with third party through our marketplace, so we provide all that throughout that journey and make sure that everybody is being heard across the board and it is done at scale as well for our customers. And I'll add, Monica, when we think about inclusivity, I mean, you and I don't look like normal engineers. And so we're always adding our personal touches to how identity is it shows up. Um, I'm a veteran. I'm a Black woman. I'm an engineer. I'm a cybersecurity person. And so when we think about identity, we are thinking about identity for ourselves and how we use and leverage identity. And um, we're thinking about the ways in which differently able people can access our products and have access to the login space. And so when we think about inclusivity, we're not just thinking about the engineering inclusivity, we're thinking about us as human beings. And so that's a big deal to us. That's one of the reasons why we're here with you today. Um, we want you to know that this is something that's top of mind for us. And so thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And hopefully we are on time, Margus. You are perfectly on the nose. <laughs> thank you so much to both of you. Efficient and very well spoken. So thank you thank so you. much for joining thank us you. here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.